Hello everyone, in this video I'll be talking about how we can use chat tools such as WhatsApp and Telegram to assist us not only to reach out to your students at this time but also to do some form of formative assessment or real-time assessment to kind of track their learning um, you know, during this period of time. So um, before I go on further, let me remind you that uh, with all sorts of assessment going on and tools going on, you don't have to adopt this in your course if you think it's not really suitable. So try to look at the pros and cons before you decide which one is the best for your course, especially in addressing your course learning objective. So when we talk about chat, um, there are other forms of words that you know goes together with uh, chat, for example, discuss brainstorming, talking, and all that. So chatting is not just about something very negative or something very useless. It's actually a process of uh, you know, engaging in meaningful conversation to ensure that learning takes place. And you can do it through discussion, can do it through brainstorming, to even talk about a case and all that. So chat is just simple or informal, slightly more informal word to cover all these things. So you have to bear in mind that in, if it's in normal face-to-face -face setting, you are doing discussion, or even brainstorming session, then you can always use these chat tools to assist you in that in that process if you want to, right? But when we talk about chat tools or even any other tools online, there's always a concern about privacy, identity, and security. If you're using Zoom, for example, whenever uh, it involves that kind of revelation of identity, like showing your webcam or name and all that, students tend to feel a bit insecure and they might not participate that well. Um, from another point of view, if you talk about chat, the same case, uh, some teachers may not be comfortable sharing a phone number. Some students may also be reluctant to share their phone numbers because they do not want uh, the lecturers to know their, you know, their, their private uh, activities and all that. Especially some lecturers who, you know, tend to stalk on students' uh, statuses and all that. So these are the things that concerns both actually. Uh, it's not just for lecturers but also for students. So. You have to really, really be clear about this before you decide whether certain tool is suitable. Um, talking about chat tools, for example, if you uh, if you let your students know that we're going to use this for teaching and learning purposes, then uh, I think they will be okay. Just that inform them earlier. From your part, if you think that you don't want students to know so much about yourself, uh, you know your your phone number and all that, you might want to decide using some tools that may not require you to reveal your uh, phone number or maybe get another uh, sim card like most lectures did you know one one sim card for students and then one sim card for personal stuff but anyway when you talk about privacy identity and security you have to be really, really concerned that it, it's not just about you but it's also uh, students so they may not be willing to participate in your whatsapp and all that if you are not if they are not clear about what you plan to do okay these are some of the key consideration that you should take uh, in terms of uh, whether you should use chat tools for real-time assessment or not. Number one is why do you need to use real-time assessment? Whether there is a need for you to do this kind of real-time assessment where you can get immediate feedback or uh, you know get instant reply from your students. So if there is no need for this, then you might want to use the chat tools for a different form of assessment, like formative assessment, where you can do more like a asynchronous kind of uh, activities, right? Then after you have decided this particular purpose then you try to find the best tool to achieve it so um, like uh, having all this session like today uh, in this in this video I'll be sharing with you some tools that you can use uh, it doesn't mean that the, the tools covered are the, the only the tools that you can you can use you can always explore more tools right so we're going to look at the pro and cons of certain tools and then you decide which one is the best to achieve the purpose and then you also have to decide when is the best time to use it because it's not meant for all the time sometimes you you might need to use you may need to use chat tool only for certain purposes and once done you tell students that okay we are done with this then uh, let's move on with other things right should it be given marks, you know, the carrot and stick kind of concept, whether you should use the carrot to really lure them to reply, to participate and all that, to be assessed by giving marks or not. So we'll be talking about this in the, later in this uh, session. Well, is it meant for all or only specific group? If you have a big group, like 200 students, 150 students, then you might not want to have a group with so many students, right? You might want to cater only for a specific group. Maybe you, you use WhatsApp only for those who have limited access to internet. You know, it's not something that you will do for the rest of the group. If you want to do for all, go ahead, but you need to find ways to manage them. If you have 
too many students i do advise you to chunk them up to split, split them up like you know maybe uh, by their group itself then it's easier for you to monitor you also have to consider whether it, it, it solely depend on you to lead it or you want the student to lead you know sometimes in chat uh, it can be out of control so you might want to have uh, students who also lead their own discussion and then report back to you or find ways to visualize that kind of discussion it's not just for you to keep on uh, leading the discussion they can also discuss and then you know report back in a different form or in, in, in a form that is easier for you to assess the problem is well, we always see chat as something leisure something undocumented but actually there's so many ways to document this discussion going on sometimes if you use uh, you know, uh, even WhatsApp, if you create a group for them to discuss, you, you'll be surprised the kind of thing that they, they talk about. So these are the things that we will discuss and let's see whether it works for you. If it works, uh, you can modify and adapt or, or, you know, try to improve and consider the usage. All right. These are some of the common chat tools that we have now. Uh, apparently like WhatsApp and Facebook they are you know same company now but WhatsApp is the largest I think so far you have practically everyone having WhatsApp almost those on the net of course and then you have um, you have Telegram which is also equally popular then you have Facebook Messenger you have WeChat not so popular now but it's quite huge in China you have Discord and also you have House Party um, House Party is quite new but more of uh, you know more of the uh, uh visual visual call video call kind of thing and then this code is more people in the gaming community right is right before we even go further to the tools you also have to take a look at the task right before you even look at which one you want to pick whether it's telegram whatsapp and and whatnot please uh, design the task first Re consider what are you planning to do like for example um if it's non assess these are the things that you can do and if it's assessed these are the things that you can do um but I would like to remind you if you are using WhatsApp for the first time for the purpose of assessment, it's always good to start with non assess activities first. You know, you don't suddenly jump into WhatsApp and tell us, look, I'm going to do a uh, task next week, can you go in and blah blah blah. So, no, you try to create that kind of uh, familiarization first and get everyone into the group first and then start with something purely social just to chat with them you know, get to know them and all that and sharing some related materials slowly you can do some ongoing monitoring no marks yet but you just do some guided discussion uh, later on i'll share some example you can even have quick quiz if you want to just to test the understanding and give them feedbacks on whatever they have done in the course or whatever they have uh, you know completed based on what you ask them to do it can always be supplementary all these activities can be supplementary means they can do something in the learning management system and then use whatsapp to kind of test them you know if you want to but at this time if you're talking about having whatsapp whatsapp as an assessment then you might want to consider whether it's suitable for it to be a progressive test or achievement test i personally do not think whatsapp is suitable for achievement tests you know final exam and all this but it's really really good for progressive tests you can always have whatsapp as a form of uh, a place to do discussion logs you know task based discussion something to for them to reflect and even do some performance evaluation but this is not so suitable at this period of time so but you can always use whatsapp as a form of disseminating your uh, material disseminating your uh, learning content and 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 all that all right so I'll, I'll be sharing some examples uh, based on whatever I've shown you now. And then once you have decided the task, then you have to consider what kind of submission do you want them to do. If your students are mainly with low bandwidth kind of uh, network, then you might want to go for text base, go for docs or text file less than 100 kilobytes, and then images. But images also not so advisable, but if you need, then keep it keep it very low uh, in terms of the file size and use voice note a short voice note in fact the voice note in your uh, whatsapp especially consume very low bandwidth and it's one form of a very good a very good way of uh, explaining things to students right rather than recording video if majority of students or maybe all the students are good in terms of the connection then you might want to uh, give them video based materials uh, images of higher quality you can even have voice longer voice or dogs on PDF but if you have two extreme groups right you have group with very good internet and the other group with uh, very low internet then I do I do recommend you to have multi uh, stream submission means you have to create two groups one group for this and the other group for that um, well then there may be some this uh, you know this dissatisfaction in terms of the need to do more for example 
uh, those in high bandwidth uh, if you want them to do video based and then suddenly you request the other group to do text based that may not be fair so you might want to really consider carefully whether you should go for video based submission or not if they, you have a group of students where they have low bandwidth network right you have to really c consider that or else it should be equal maybe in terms of the submission you know, text based text based but you, sh you provide them options uh, multi print, multiple uh, stream submission is good because you cater for more. Because I always, I always believe like this, you know. Let's say in a group of 100, uh, 70 students are with high bandwidth, and then 30 percent of the 30 percent of the students, 30 of them have very low bandwidth. Sometimes we think too much of the 30, and then we forgot about the 70, right? As much as we want to include the uh, the 30 percent, you should not exclude the 70 percent too, right? So in a way, you have to tell them point blank, like, okay, look, you have better internet connection, and you have to do slightly, you know, additional stuff. And this, this group of students, they, they are handicapped in terms of the uh, internet connection. So uh, they will do, they'll still do text based, more or less the same thing, but they are largely text based. But you, I want you to have more images, for example, meaning multi-stream submission. Because after all, if you design your assessment well. What you should be measuring is the content that they produce rather than the form of media, right? You cannot say, okay, this group produce uh, images, so I give it more marks, even though the content may not be that good. It shouldn't be like that. It should. It depends on your rubrics, right? You have to really decide what are you measuring. So if you if you want to measure skills or uh, content, then it doesn't really matter what kind of what kind of media they submit. Just that if you want them, if you want to test them in terms of the media, then there will be a different case, right? For example, if you're teaching art, you want them to produce video, but this low bandwidth group cannot produce video, then suddenly you ask them to turn it into text space, then it may not be fair, right? Because your rubric specifically want to test the video, clear? So uh, these are the things that you have to consider before you really, really decide how you want to cater for uh, you know for the for different groups of learners to, in, to be inclusive just remember that when you want to be inclusive it doesn't mean you only cater for the low bandwidth group you also have to look at the high bandwidth group because you don't want to, them to be left out just because you are you know lowering down the expectation too much until they feel like what <laughs> what am i doing uh, i think if you read recently like some colleges private colleges especially they pay so much and then um, the the input given by the lectures is so minimal then they decided to drop out these are the issue because when you talk about inclusivity it's not just it's not just about the lower end of the spectrum it's also the higher end of the spectrum so i think you have to be humane a bit by considering both ends don't just be too obsessed with one group and then you forgot the other one if you are really care if you really care about inclusivity then you should be talking about both group right try to cater for both group okay let's go for uh, some of the setting that you can do for chat tools uh, whether whether it's whatsapp or uh, telegram or any 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 group that you plan to do first one is to set the ground rule of course set the ground rules clearly you know you can put in a chat form but uh, do it in a short and simple language like number one do not put ads you know some students love to put ads do not do not use certain uh, way of uh, you know replying and all that you try to be clear the grounds earlier so that they know but not too rigid in a way that you specify so many rules that they feel afraid of uh, joining the group all right number two allow private responses to your task yeah this one is very important do not set a rule like everyone is replying the group right or else by the end of the day if you have 50 students you have 50 chats and all that and some students may not be comfortable ask them to reply privately to you you can post a question, post a task, and ask them to reply privately. I'll show you a sample later. And then also remind them about your uptime and downtime. Uptime and downtime is like your, your period of entertaining them during the WhatsApp group or Telegram group, whatever group you have. For example, you set the uptime as maybe 11 and then downtime at by 6 p.m., for example. So anything after 6 p.m., you will reply tomorrow morning. So let them be clear about this. So they can still ask you during uh, after the downtime, but you will entertain them after that right when you are up not really like you they will get reply immediately but if it's emergency and just so happen you are you are you know reading it then you can take necessary action if you want to if it's not then be clear of your uptime and downtime or else still you know you get so many chats at night and then you may be feeling overwhelmed you have to consider about your workload and also commitment as well so be clear of this okay 
In fact, number two and number three, you can put it in number one. Means when you set the ground rules, you can include number two and number three in your ground rules. This is sample. For example, uh, if you're talking about tasks, uh, I gave a task using WhatsApp here. If it's uh, okay with a uh, slightly good of uh, slightly good connection, you can put PDF like this. The good thing about using chat tools like this, you get to see the file size. Like this one's one three one four three one four k kilobyte. So, and when the students see the file size like this, they will download it because it's not so big. If you if you upload the file and it's twenty megabyte, for example, they will be reluctant to download, right? And they'll be telling you I have no data and whatnot. So, so if you know that. They don't have uh, you know uh, enough um, bandwidth or data to work with, so you might want to look, resize it. Give clear instruction. That's very important, and make use of emoji like this. Not too many emoji, but sometimes emoji help to highlight things. Okay. Then every time you give something, even you have text, try to include a voice note. If you use WhatsApp, just press the uh, you know the the microphone icon on your um, you know on your panel there when you type the text just press it and then say something but here uh, it's good to have that verbal explanation because I know what I notice is even though your instruction is clear in the text form a lot of them do not read it clearly and they will still ask you questions right sometimes after you have explained many times they still ask you okay what do you want you know so and blah, blah blah so might as well supplement it with the voice note like in my case my instruction can be in um, in english then my voice note can be in malay sometimes so so when i put it in then they, they got what i wanted and then they would do it because i know this voice note even though it feels like it's consuming a lot of data, actually it's not. So you can always supplement it with, with a voice note. Okay, another one that I think is good is to do a little bit of analytics. Um, let's say you you put uh, you put up a chat and you want to know it's no, there's no blue ticket, for example, because uh, if you, in, in chat group, the read receipt part will not be disabled. It can be, it's automatically enabled, so nobody can turn it off. So even if you turn off your read receipt in the group part, the uh, read receipt is automatically uh, automatically on, right? So what you can do is you just uh, uh, you know hold. If you are using iOS, just hold the chat for some time, and then this will pop up, and then you just click uh, info. Just click on it in info, and then um, you will be able to see things like this. Right, you know who actually read it at one time, at what time. You see here, most of my students actually read it at night or even afternoon. So, uh, one thing good is once you know that they read your chat or messages at night or maybe at a certain hour, then you might want to adjust your uptime and downtime. Right, sometimes you set your uptime maybe too early for them. Depends, but. What I noticed the trend is this helps me a lot in discovering the best time to engage my students. For example, if I know that a lot of them are reading at a certain time, then I will make myself available during that time. Then they can ask me anything. Right? Also, it's also good to keep track of those who have not read it yet. So if you realize that a lot of them have not read it, then you identify them and then approach them privately. Or maybe if they have not and I know really read your private chat, then you might want to also give them a call. The SMS and, and and whatnot. So at least they get to how to put it. Uh, they get to be uh, monitored from different means, right? So it also show, shows that you care. <laughs> Sometimes students, when they realize that you care about them, they somehow will reply to you because they know that you are concerned about them as well. Uh, no matter how 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 you want to think about your students being bad, not replying and all that. Sometimes they may be in trouble. So it's good to 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 really monitor. I say not all means there will be one or two outliers, right? Outliers, even even outliers, they need to be helped. You can't be keep on complaining that oh I don't want to help this too. They may have their own problem. Doesn't matter whether it's attitude, this that kind of problem needs us to help so if you're using Android when you press on the chat the how to put it all this feature will come up in above there you will appear on on top so you might want to get yourself familiarized with this feature okay this is an example of tasks that you can do on um, WhatsApp you can always uh, put them some uh, you know some instruction like this uh, try to find out the key concept of machine translation give two points give be clear you know how many points you want and how many words and then don't forget to use hashtag because if you hashtag uh, you, easier for easier for you to find when you want to search the chat for example there's so many chat going on in a group if you don't ask them to do the hashtag it will be hard for you to track so you might as well keep tell them immediately that they need to use hashtag if they don't see this you might want to bold it using the feature in the whatsapp group 
all right you know you can use the text bow and all that but it's good to use hashtag because once you search the hashtag all the all the chat will appear so try to use this kind of thing if it's telegram is easier the moment you hashtag it becomes a link and when you click on it all the all the posting of the same thing will appear together right also make use of the um reply privately part you know like this one reply privately so you can give your instruction and then tell them to reply privately to you so that you don't flood the uh the, the chat groups with so many replies you know sometimes it's it's going to be overwhelming for you to read through as well so reply private privately but if you're 150 students then basically you are going to read 150 private messengers so anyway it's good to personalize this if it's too too many you might want to group them you know in a small group so that will be easier for you to manage i leave it to you to decide on this but why is it important to reply privately i think sometimes students they feel a bit reluctant to reply in the group so they would rather reply privately so give them an option to reply privately to you and if you don't tell them then they won't know right so be clear all right so as long as you're clear um try to remind them from time to time the ground rules so that they follow it okay um, if you want to do quick quiz in WhatsApp, it's a bit harder. What you what you can do is something like this. I don't really recommend it, but if you need to, you know, after you have given them a text, for example, you can do quiz like this: one, two, uh, you know, and then PM your answers to me. PM means private message, all right? So they can just answer like number one, number two, the answer. But again, this is just a quick check. So if you want to use this as a form of uh, of summative assessment, it's not really suitable because there is you know there's also it's a form of cheating and um, uh, but but if you do it nicely just to track their their progress and ask them to do it uh, to check their own understanding it, it will be better and um, it's not sufficient for them to just submit the answer for you and then you just leave it be so try to give it back as well all right for example if a lot of students are answering number two wrongly then you might want to do a recap in a group look a lot of you did not answer number two correctly let us relook at number two what what went wrong maybe you should read back at the text you know this is the part which is wrong and all that so feedback actually is good in chat if if, if your feedback is not meaningful then it doesn't help the 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 learning process and i know that a lot of lecturers or educators who spend time using whatsapp to teach like my case i've been using for so many years since i don't know 2012 i think uh and all this um it, it's really hard for you to to reply to every single one so sometimes it's good to really uh, group all the feedback and put it in the group if majority are doing it if not then try to entertain the uh the person individually uh, try not to attack students uh, in a group uh, you know they don't like it because um, once you do it once or twice they they will be reluctant to reply in the group anymore and some lecturers would like to uh, uh, you know kind of like uh, point out the mistakes of the students in the group so they, it's actually not a good practice the same thing that we won't do in face to face anyway right so when it comes to uh, online chat try to do the same thing okay this is an sample task if a majority of students or all your students are having good connection uh, you know internet connection you might want to have this weekly kind of uh, video chat because whatsapp now allows you to have uh, eight up to eight people for group video call this is good for language learning and all that or even maybe a quick update of their progress in certain project or assignment you can have this 60 uh, seconds of pure thought that i normally do for example give them a topic and then earlier and then each student has 60 seconds to share because you don't want them to talk too much in a video call that would cut down the number of uh, time spent as well as the data consumed so do this as a you know you don't have to do it weekly if you don't want to but you can always do it like a frequent engagement with your students today can be six tomorrow can be four of them and all that try to engage them in a weekly buzz using using this video call or video group video call uh, available in chat tools like uh, whatsapp and even and even you know uh, other tools like facebook messenger and all that because I realize students, when the moment they know that you care about them, you start calling them and doing this, they, they get very excited and they will complete the task. And you'll be surprised actually. You, I, I honestly think you'll be surprised if you start engaging them in uh, whatever you want to do rather than keep on forcing them to just uh, learn on their own, uh, reading your slides and all that. Sometimes it's good to engage them through this mean. I know it's not easy. It takes a lot of your time, but it's something worth spending because if you leave them like that uh, or left behind then you are the one who feel very bad about your, not not really yourself maybe you feel bad that you're not doing your best for your students so it's really good to show your care you care about your about them right 
So um, this is this is a Telegram. Telegram allows you to do quiz. I'm going to demonstrate this uh, later, but uh, this is somehow one way to to engage your students by using the uh, Telegram uh, quiz tools, right? Telegram has a quiz tool, a poll, poll actually, but they turn it into quiz mode. Right now, I'm going to explain to you how to use Telegram a bit. I know some of you may have used Telegram, um, you know, the mobile version. But uh, you can always make use of the desktop version. Just download Telegram Desktop um, and install it in your PC or Mac. Uh, Telegram Desktop is a bit different from WhatsApp. Like WhatsApp is web-based actually. So um, if you are not connected to the internet, whatever you do here, sometimes it does it cannot be synchronized. Uh, the good thing about what Telegram Desktop is you can still put your things here. Once you get connected, it will be sync, right? It will be synchronized with uh, the mobile version and all that. So you can register. Uh, a mobile version first i mean register your phone number with a mobile version one thing good about uh telegram is that you do not have to review your phone number if you don't want to so you go to edit setting and then uh, under privacy and security you can actually see here pro number nobody so what you need to do is to just give the username to your students like in my case is keyman xp so i'll just tell student search for keyman xp and can you can add me in if you want to right so this is one thing good about telegram if you're concerned about letting students know about your phone number so this is one way to solve it okay then of course the point of using telegram what uh, desktop is like it's easier to type if you have a lot of things to monitor this is the best way to use it because in the mobile version sometimes you get delete you know your your mobile uh, storage can be full and then it'll be hard so you can just uh, install it first and then you can uninstall the mobile version if you if you want to so let's say i have a group here hi everyone Okay, and then I can upload the, the text. Imagine I upload uploaded the text. The text can be uh, in a form of a PDF or images up to you. Let's say you want them to read, and then you want to un you want them to answer a quiz. In the mobile version, you just have to click insert, and then the, there's one option called poll. But in the desktop version, you have to go to the three dots up here, create poll. Then activate the quiz mode and remove anom anonymous voting because if you don't. You know, if you put anonymous, then you don't know who actually have answered it. So, just type the question here. Based on the text, what happened to uh, Ali, right? He left school. He went to town. He just stayed at home. Okay, for example. You can add more and more if you want to but let's say i have three then because it's a quiz mode then you have to pick the answer maybe the answer is he left school then it also have an explanation if they got it wrong user will see this comment after choosing a wrong answer that is not correct or that is not quite correct please read paragraph one for example you can always use this to test the reading comprehension you know a quick quiz on certain things and all that but if you want to measure it as a uh, summative assessment like final exam that may not be suitable because after all they can cheat right they can always ask their friend and all that but if you want to do a quick real-time assessment all right real-time assessment or testing how much they know a certain topic and you're there then it'll be good so everyone will will wait for you to post the question and everyone start answering okay so you can always set a time like tell the student at 2 a.m later i'll release a quiz or they will be waiting for you and then you just release it uh, some questions okay um so if i pick one he left school you see the effect here right so you get that that cheerful explanation if you click here if they got it wrong then they will they will see the explanation so this is one way to make use of a telegram quiz you can even use hashtag task one like i mentioned just now in whatsapp it's manual but in telegram if you click this one it will highlight all the posts that you have tagged with this is very interesting and very nice to to use i i love to use this kind of uh task you know hashtag to 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 monitor or to label my tasks then it will be easier it also ha it comes with this uh export chat history right let's say you have done with the whole semester you want to export just export it and then you want to export everything or just photos or voice messages video messages of course the text file will be uh, exported you know always export everything so that you keep a lock of what happened so if mqa asks you what no one need to be done this is this is where you have the proof right things like that so 
Telegram is quite flexible in that way. Uh, WhatsApp allows you to export as well in an email. You can email the whole chat log, but it's a bit tricky to retrieve the file, right? So Telegram will be easier. So um, try to give, uh, try to test it out. Some students love Telegram, some students love WhatsApp. Um, but based on my uh, testing so far of, uh, of the, all these years, both are quite okay in terms of the connection or bandwidth usage. It doesn't consume a lot of bandwidth. And the good thing about Telegram is you can just post something once the internet is available, it will be it will be shared. If you don't want to use uh, if you don't want to use uh, WhatsApp, uh, Telegram, and all that, you can always make use of the chat tools in uh, in Elip. In Elip, we have chat tools. Not so interactive, but you can always specify the time. Then student can come in and then they can chat with you. Or if you don't want them to chat with you, you can create the chat for students and they can come in and do the ch chat so that everything is visualized or uh, you know verbalized in the form of text. And then you can save the chat session for your you know whatever you want to do. If you want to assess them, then you can assess them through the chat log, right? The log of the chat activities. Another way is to use Padlet. Padlet is very nice. Uh, in Padlet, there's so many format for you to choose one of the format that I like the most is the uh, the column one, the shelf format, where you can actually specify something that they have done offline, or even some materials like this one. I put something which is they have done offline, and then I ask them to discuss. It is this is by group, of course, right? Sometimes when you discuss uh, without verbalizing, you don't know what happened. So it's good for them to write it down, right? So Padlet is one way to, to engage this. And I know you can always give topics up there, right? Different topics. You need one, you need two, and then they can start talking about it, right? Uh, Padlet also have back channel format where it's something like a chat, but it's not really suitable for group discussion because it's like one liner kind of thing. So not really suitable for, for group kind of log. So what happened is you can let them discuss and then all this platform like Padlet and whatnot, whatever they put here will be the platform for you to gather the, um, the, the chat log. And then if you want to give marks for that, then you can give. If you don't want, then it's okay. Just let them discuss. It's a platform for them to uh, talk about some issues or some topics and for you to see whether they are on the right track. Okay, so um, this is Discord. Not so popular among uh, lectures, but some some kind of um, you know to another tool for you to use if you want to engage your students in group. You can because it's like Telegram. You can create groups and then they can join, and then any topic of interest you can share. It's quite similar to um, quite similar to uh, Telegram, but this is more sort of more more popular among the gamers. So the younger ones, like you know, students in pre-U, they love this because they are so into gaming, right? So you you ask your learners, right? Because you know them better breaks you know whatever tools you want to use whatsapp you know telegram whatever it is it still goes back to your rubric what are you measuring actually are you measuring what matters if you are measuring activities in terms of participation you know like the, the sample here then you can use a preset of rubrics if you are not sure about which rubric to use you can always search or you can ask the experts we have so many experts in assessment in in Unimas or even uh, you can always ask those uh, from other universities if you're talking about discussion alone you can have a rubrics like this so let's say I carried out a discussion in the in the whatsapp group I can always save the whole whatsapp chat log right keep it as my document and then I use a rubric to measure it so if I create different groups I can always measure them using my my rubric whether it's in terms of topic relevance or substantive uh, uh, justification and all that or even uh, timeliness whether the way they, they explain things if I talk about language I can talk about the cooperation the turn taking and all that so it really depends on what you want to put in your rubrics and from that rubric you decide how do you want to keep all those chat and discussion going on so the good thing about having all this chat is everything is verbalized in terms of text format or even voice or even video all these are the things that we can keep if you do it in class if you have five students sitting and then you have you can't really record them you don't know what's happening right <laughs> they may be talking about something else but if you have a group where everything is verbalized you know, right, and, 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 and documented it actually gives a better way of measuring right it give you better better resource rely on in giving them the marks or giving them uh, the uh, the points if you want to give marks lah. if you do not want to give marks then it's okay right so these are the video tutorials that you can refer to i have a few if you want to learn more about whatsapp and also telegram you can also follow 
uh, Professor Abdul Karim alias from ESM because he, she, he shared a few tips on how to use WhatsApp and Telegram uh, for low bandwidth usage. I think that's all from me. Um, if you have further questions, you can ask me. Um, if you need help, let me know. I'll be more than happy to assist you. Just just try it, you know, do it, and then um, let me know whether it works for you. But if it doesn't work out well for you, don't be disappointed. I think we are in a period where, uh, in a situation where which is unprecedented, and uh, we are all exploring, we are all learning. So don't be too harsh on yourself that, you know, everything doesn't seem to work well. Just stay calm, keep calm, try to explore more tools, try to reach out to your students. Even if it's low bandwidth, high bandwidth, you try to reach out to them. If you have no internet network at all, students with no internet network at all, then you might want to go for the conventional way. Like like my case, I, I actually use post, uh, postage. I, you know, I let the student post the, the work to me and all that. These are the things that we have to do at this moment. Unfortunately, it's not comfortable, but something that we need to explore together and we cannot work alone, actually. Um, if you need help, let me know. And, and I think that's all from my sharing. Thank you very much for listening. I know it's been tough on some of you uh, to do this kind of transition to online learning, but I do hope that you stay strong and don't be too, you know, bogged down by the negativity around us. Try to keep just to try to keep yourself excited about what lies ahead, and uh, let's do this together. Thank you very much.